Okay, here we're going to look at genetic engineering related to medicine, and particularly with vaccines. So genetic engineering in medicine, creating magic bullets, if you may have heard. Uh, sometimes it's what it's called to, oh, we just fix the genes, we can fix the problem. Uh, one example of that sort of pertaining to this is in diabetes. The body is unable to control levels of sugar because of lack of insulin. So here's a healthy individual, a pancreas producing insulin, when sugar is present, allowing sugar to get put into cells and regulating blood glucose levels. Healthy, however, diabetes can be cured if the body is supplied with insulin. So in certain cases of diabetes, which is not producing the insulin, uh, then glucose is left outside, not getting into the cells. So if we just supply insulin, right, we kind of create this situation. So what happens is the gene encoding for insulin has been introduced into bacteria uh, through recombinant DNA and able to get bacteria to produce human insulin that can then be added to patients. And that can kind of recorrect, especially particularly the type 1 diabetes, where we're having insulin not being produced. Just as a refresher, type 2 diabetes is where insulin is produced, but it lacks an insulin receptor. So that's a slightly different case by just adding more insulin to this case not necessarily going to cause a fix to this problem because it's a problem with the receptor. Okay, genetic engineering related to vaccines. This is kind of an important one, and this is a great way to look at it. So we have a virus, and we're developing a vaccine against that virus. Remember, antibiotics that we may take kill things, uh, biotic things. Well, viruses really aren't alive. They're simply this kind of protein coat wrapped around a DNA or RNA fragment. So the influence of virus, I want you to think is a full house, right? Brick, mortar, windows, doors, foundation, roof, and everything. An inactivated vaccine, this is one type of vaccine. This is where they basically take the house and make it into rubble. They take the house and they knock it down. They take the flu virus, in this case we'll use this as an example, and they denature it in some way. They may heat shock it. There's different um, enzymes they might add. In some ways, they're basically inactivating it. However, because it's rubble of the house, it's the entire flu um, basic virus just inactivated in some way. What genetic engineering is doing is they're going one step further than this. And they're what's called a subunit vaccine. This is where they're just using bricks because we want the body to recognize the virus but we don't want the body to be at threat for getting the virus. And that's one of the problems with inactivated uh, vaccines. Subunits just bricks. There's no doors, there's no roof, there's no windows. You can't really make the house out of just bricks. You can make certain components of the house, but not the full house. So in this case, subunit vaccines are often made from isolated influenza surface proteins. So the surface proteins are the important part because it's cell to cell recognition. So you may have heard of H1N1, H3N2. These are referring to some of the coat proteins to particular viruses. I want you to think of the BRICS as subunits. These subunit vaccines don't contain broken viruses. They only contain the surface protein or parts. The immune system uh, builds a response to the coat proteins, which it would recognize anyway. These are the BRICS. Gives protection against the whole house, meaning once we have the coat proteins recognized, the body's immune system then can attack that virus very early on. The advantage of just having the coat proteins is that there's no actual DNA or RNA virus contained there. There's no way the body can actually get sick. But we are getting the advantage of a vaccine because we're upregulating or building up the body's immune system. This just gives you a little bit of an idea of how viruses are labeled. They could be pretty complex. So this subunit vaccine, which I want to focus on, there's advantages and there's disadvantages with anything. But genetic engineering has allowed us to create these subunit vaccines. And they don't contain any live components and are considered very safe. So the advantage is there's no live components, there's no risk of introducing a disease. If we tried to heat kill a virus and we didn't heat kill it all the way, we could be infecting the individual with that virus. Safer, more stable than live attenuated vaccines. Those are ones that are heat killed. Disadvantages, though, so there are, it's not a perfect world. Um, the exact combination of those um, surface uh, proteins must be uh, correctly identified to be to or to allow the immune system to have an effective response against future potential infections.
There's also no guarantee memory will form for long distance future responses. Typically, this is why you have to get the flu vaccine every year. The, the subunit vaccines don't have quite the longevity of actually getting infected with the main virus. However, the short term advantage is it may get you through flu season uh, or reduce at least the symptoms that you may get. Uh, it's a novel kind of uh, vaccine. Again, just having the surface proteins, just the subunits, not having any of the interior disease vectoring uh, components. Uh, these, the DNA vaccine uses plasmid vectors. It elicits a cellular immune response rather than an antibody production. And because we're not getting antibody production, that's why we're not getting the super long-term effects here. But we are getting short-term effects, again, for get us through that flu season. And it's a lot safer because rather than introducing that whole virus um, live or inactivated to the immune system, the subunit contains those fragmented pathogens and essentially gets the effective appropriate immune response. This gives you a little bit, again, of the detail of what goes on. and It's a very complex process. But basically, instead of getting infected with the flu strain, by having just the coat proteins, adding those to the body and getting the body to develop um, recognition for those, it can then attack if the real virus comes in a lot quicker. Uh, it's just a way that for certain flus that are very virulent, avian flu you may have heard, the, how the vaccine was developed by the reverse genetics technique. So again, those coat proteins are so important and that's how it gets its name, taking those non-virulent portions, adding them to cultures, and getting those in a certain vaccine, we get the body to recognize and identify with a potential very virulent flu without any risk to the individual contracting the actual flu because there is no DNA or RNA encoded, just the coat proteins.